What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pete's Basement. Steve couldn't be here today, but we've left the chair open for him to make it feel like he's here. He really doesn't say much anyway. But we got me and Ramon over here. Dude, give Lindsay a break, man. We got, like, comics to talk about. There's comics in here? There are comics in there. Some some really well-drawn ones, actually, yes. and some funny shit. But, uh, we got, like, regular funny books to talk about, even though the comics we read predominantly are not funny, per se. I noticed you have your white t-shirt on. Yeah. With a little navy logo and everything. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very nice. I also have a white t-shirt yeah. with a navy logo on it. You're skinny gimme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a little mini me. Yeah. Guinea me. Yeah. And then there was two. Uh, all right, right off the bat, uh, Craig Rippon left us a couple of posts on Facebook about the whole Gary Friedrich judgment. Now, I've had a really shit busy week at work, so I didn't hear about any of this until uh, thankfully Craig hit us up and you know wanted our opinion on it. And uh, that shit was pretty fucked up, actually. It's, it's beyond fucked up, it's... I mean, you know, I've always heard, you know, going to school as a graphic artist and going to college for graphic arts, I always heard that if, you, if you're under the employ of Disney and you create something of your own free will, not even on their hours. If you're home writing some shit, drawing some shit, it's theirs. They own it. That is a contract you sign when you go to work for Disney. A lot of businesses, corporations are like that, period. And apparently that's the deal with Gary Friedrich, who is the creator of Ghost Rider. He um, is not getting any kind of compensation for the popularity of the Ghost Rider movies, and I use that term loosely. But, um, you know, he did create the character back in the 1970s, and anyone and who says different... Loved. Right, he's People a great love character. love the character. The movie sucks balls, but... But the fact of the matter is, I mean, I don't think Marvel turned around and said, hey, we need a biker with a flaming fucking head that's, you know, uh, a whole, like, Satan's emissary on Earth type of shit. The guy created the character, and Marvel just said, okay, we'll publish it in Marvel Premiere, or whatever the fuck book it was. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, you but the point is, it. I do own it somewhere. Which will bring me to another question from uh, Radman on YouTube. But on, staying on this subject for a second... Uh, you know, he created the character. He's not getting any compensation. According to the lawsuit judgment, uh, the judge ruled that Marvel does, in fact, own the character. And not only that, so Friedrich's not getting any money for the fucking character. He now owes Marvel 17 grand for, you know, backed, uh, for, you know, legal fees That's and bullshit. for selling prints of the Ghost Rider movie at conventions. So it's fucking bullshit. You're, you're double fucking the man. You yeah, know? the guy's got nothing. I mean, you know, he's a poor artist from the 70s, and you're just fucking just drilling him. Yeah. Now, yeah. isn't Stan Lee still getting something from Marvel and Marvel? Stan movies? Lee's like the, the king of England. He's a figurehead. You know, he's not. So, I mean, is it, will it kill them to throw something at this fucking guy? Seriously. I mean, the, now that Disney's in control, you know there's not going to be any leeway, but I mean, give the guy a, throw the guy a bone, man. Three ninety nine an issue, fucks. You could throw him some money. I can't outright stop reading comics from Marvel and still expect to have a weekly comic book no, show. No. That's not going to happen. But uh, I am actually hereby calling for a boycott of the Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance movie. Seriously. Not that I think that's going to be difficult, given how awesome the first one was. Awesome. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not going to go see it just because of this. This is fucking bullshit. And I really hope the movie tanks at this point. Nothing against Nicolas Cage. He's a cheesy actor, but I like Nicolas Cage. I, always, I like almost every movie he's done. Fuck you guys. I'm sorry. I like Nick Cage. I think he's fucking great funny. Uh, I'm not saying he's a great actor. I know he's not. But he, he's... he has moments. I'll give him that. I'll give him moments. Other than that. Dude, why didn't you just put the bunny down? From Con Air? Come on, it's one of the fucking greatest lines ever. I don't remember Con Air like, oh, verbatim like you do. I just remember wanting to just put the bunny down. But anyway, I'm getting off track. Yeah, way off track. Uh, there is actually a PayPal um, fund up to help out Gary Friedrich. If anybody wants to donate money, the, the links and everything are on our Facebook. You can go check it out there. Uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter for up-to-the-minute comic reviews and such of that like. And uh, check us out. We get a lot of comments on YouTube, which is going to bring me to the next part. Uh, last week, we went over a couple of eBay stuff, and Radman107 wrote in and said, uh, Hey, Pete, do you actually read these gems that you, f that you get on eBay, or do you just collect them for the sake of collecting them? Uh, a little from column A, a little from column B. I definitely read everything I buy, no matter what it is, unless Seriously. something I've read already. That like you know, I, I was into the EC reprints back in the mid in the early to mid nineties, which is how I got into you know comics a lot in the first place. 
So now me buying the originals, I don't really have to read a lot of them because I've read the stories already. Okay. But anything I do buy, like uh, there was the first Black Manta I got for like 6 or $8 or whatever. I read that. Uh, yeah, anything. I, I always love tossing through like the old Silver Age stuff because the stories are so much simpler than they were now. You know, it's a one issue, self-contained story. And some of the just the silly antics that go on, they were funny. It's, books back I then. mean, when it comes down to it, you collect a lot of books. And it's great investment. But at the end of the day, you're a fan first. Yeah. We all are. And it ain't about the if, money. If, for if me. you don't read your books and you're just doing it for collection, we're gonna have the nineties all over again in which books go crazy. People There are a lot of those of idiots them. in the world. They really are. Yeah. It's terrible. Um uh, also, I want to outright apologize to everyone out there in Geekland for my own fuck up that everyone was quick to let me know about. And I didn't realize it until, I, I mean, my only defense, and this isn't much of one, is that it's been four, four or five years since I've seen the movie, so my memory ain't what it used to be. Maybe it's the rum. But, what? Maybe it's all the rum. No, it's, um, it's definitely not the rum. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, it's not the rum. <laughs> I'll give you guys a guess what it, what it was. Uh, the memory never comes back. But uh, anyway, I want to apologize for my American Splendor fuck up. It was not about Harry uh, Robert Crumb. He does show up though. But um, Paul Giamatti plays uh, Harvey Pecker, and Pecker. that's Pecker. Well, yeah, let's yeah. let's not get into more cock and Peckers and everything else. Diggle. You know we're not mature enough to handle it. But uh, yeah, I fucked up. I'm sorry. I throw myself on the mercy of the court. Uh, also. Microwave25 said uh, it was appalled to hear that I was dropping Batwoman. He likes the supernatural aspect. That was something I found difficult to get into. I really did like the artwork, but they changed artists on for, really? the, for the new line, for number six. Not, not totally Fuck. thrilled with that idea. But Steve is still collecting it, Micro, so... Uh, I am too. Okay. I just I'm, I'm the only one off it. I mean, I... <laughs> Solid. Thank you. <laughs> one more. I, yeah, I just couldn't... I bought too much fucking shit already. These guys are getting it, so I'll just read theirs yeah, at yeah. this point. Um, I must disagree with you, however, when you said uh, if you seemed like Aquaman was losing steam. I, I, I don't so. agree. No. I really don't. Uh, I, th I think Jeff Johns is doing a great job with it, and I'm, I find myself even more intrigued by, you know, they're getting into, like, the history of Atlantis and how it sank in the first place. That's so awesome. I, I can't wait for the next issue. And, you know, at this point, the one thing I am afraid of is that, like, Jeff Johns took Green Lantern to a whole new level and made him awesome. Yeah. But now, like, Green Lan he thinks Green Lantern's fucking Batman. Yeah. And, like, he could fuck Batman up. That's just not happening. Like in recent Green I don't yeah. want him to do the same thing with Aquaman and he's, like, dumbing down Superman and Batman in the JLA. You know, like, there's no way Aquaman's ever going to fuck up Batman. And if that does happen, I will personally find Jeff Johns. I will kick him in the shins and run like the devil. What? I will. And um, finally... I mean, you know Aquaman is stronger than Batman, right? Batman could beat anybody. I told you this. <sighs> Cosmic Kai was notwithstanding, I always, and we've had this argument before, there were two characters in all of comicdom I think could beat Batman. That's Captain America and Wolverine. If Batman has time... He could definitely fuck up Wolverine. He could fuck up anybody. Yeah. But, but if he was to face Aquaman right there without ever knowing him... Oh, now we're Especially, talking about the whole DCNU and not like the real Batman. No. Who you know will probably uh, be back in a year. Okay, calm. Let's just skip this topic. Sorry. One more. No, no. One more. Steven Gaspard hit us up and uh, on Facebook. He said he doesn't like the new Avengers lineup. and Because um, it, it's just like, you know, you've got two guys from the FF. You've got Spider-Man and Thing. You've got Wolverine, who was an X-Man. You've got... like Storm. It, Storm now is an Avenger? Yeah. This is new to me. Basically, the Avengers... Well, he's talking about the main Avengers team, right? Not new Avengers. I guess so, yeah. You know, I, 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 I'm just kind of encompassing everybody at this point. And the way it looks is, one, A, the Avengers used to be an exclusive group. And now it's like, hey, open door policy. Come on in. I think um, everybody's been an Avenger. At, at least at some point. So and now the box. Avengers has gone from, like, a specific group of characters, like, you know, Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch, Vision, to everybody that's popular in Marvel right now in the door. So, uh, Steve, I, I partially do agree with you there. Uh, yes. um, it's just like fucking, <clears throat> it's everybody at this point. Everybody popular together well, for one big, it's a big team up book as opposed also to too a too many team books. Book. Secret, That's for sure. Regular, Secret Avengers is fucking good New though. Avengers. I read your guys' Secret Avengers. I don't buy that myself. If it's good, why don't you buy it? 
I have no room for anything. I sell my shit on eBay as it is. No, you're right. Um, I think there's too many teams. Maybe it'll get dumbed down. I really just hope, you know, given the fact that DC uh, is still dominating like the top 10 in sales each month, but on the other hand, Marvel, uh, you know, produces more books per month. So, like, you know, the per capita, the, they kind of even themselves out. But I really just hope Marvel doesn't pull a DCNU type of shit. That uh, They're not. On one not hand, yet. it not could yet. it could rectify a lot of shit. Like maybe somebody gets the Infinity Gauntlet and, I don't know, twists around some shit. Maybe we put back Spider-Man's marriage. Maybe we have Spidey kick the shit out of Mephisto, something like that. So basically a brand new day type of situation instead with Infinity Gauntlet. Don't you dare use those. But that's the same words. shit. It's a fucking cosmic thing. Mephi hmm. Next. I did just something. I I really just want to see Spidey kick the shit out of Mephisto. It's not going to happen anytime I soon. Know. With the movies coming out. Oh, I know. They're very connected with each other, so they're not going to revamp bullshit. But if they were to do it, and I'm sure some asshole at Marvel is sitting there thinking about oh, it. Oh yeah, somebody's plotting it out. Yeah. Definitely, that is <clears throat> the way it should be. Something with the Infinity Gauntlet and make Marvel's own crisis. If they have to do it. I don't think they should do it. I don't think so either. I'm completely against the idea. And if they do do it, I will personally find Joey Q and kick him in the shins and run like the devil. I want to see this. I want to see you run like the devil after kicking somebody in the shins. Finally, before we get to this week's books, I want to thank our good director, Roger, who just got back from Costa Rica and brought me back Smiles Spider-Man Colgate from Costa Rica. Um, it's still Colgate, though. That's pretty funny. And he also brought me back this delicious Centurio rum. Not aged in nine years, which I'm going to pour myself a shot in this incredible Hulk shot glass right here. Roger and I have been hitting this bottle for a little while before uh, we started filming. So, Roger, thank you very much. Salute. Uh. All right. Let's get to this week in books. First up, Punisher Max 22 finishes off the series. Um, I have been on the fence with this series for <clears throat> basically since its inception. Um, I haven't really cared for Punisher Max, just like, you know, I'm kind of scratching my armpit at this point, kind of symbolizes my, you know, my disdain for this particular series. I'm this not scratching my crotch or my ass, but I'm just my armpit, you know? Thanks for the images. Yeah, no. I haven't read none of this shit except for this book. I liked it. This particular book, see, this is what I mean, like, when I'm on the fence about, because, like, I... It, I, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Sometimes I liked it, sometimes I didn't. There were aspects of it that I liked. There were a lot of aspects that I didn't like. This was like a what-if Punisher. It was a whole other world of Punisher where the Kingpin just comes to power now, 30 years later in Frank's fucking Punisher run. He uses Elektra as an assassin to kill him. Punisher cripples Elektra. Kingpin fucks her. Punisher fucks her, I think, if I remember right. correctly. Fuck, fuck. Fuck, fuck. Uh, you know, then he kills the Kingpin, the Punisher dies in this one. This was, the thing about the Punisher Max, when Garth Ennis made it, it was still in the 616 universe, but it was still like a sidestep. Uh. There were no, um, you know, there were no superheroes running around. It was the Punisher, grim and gritty, down to earth, fighting fucking rapists, criminals, drug traffickers, human traffickers, the really kind of just scum of the human race. Yeah. The Punisher was just killing them. And that's what he does. This took it to a whole other level, and it just wasn't good overall. However, I, I will not recommend this particular Punisher Max series, but this particular book, if you are a Punisher fan, um, please ignore the several pages with Vanessa Fisk and Elektra, but when you've got Punisher lying on a slab, he's dead, and you've got Nick Fury was talking cool. about him and his life and what he did and what he went through, and the legacy that he leaves behind, this book alone is worth it to get. Just buy this book, self-contained, <clears throat> ignore anything that happened beforehand, and just listen to what Nick Fury has to say about the Punisher. And what it's, he does, too. And what he does. This is, this is a great book was. as a standalone just for that. Ignore everything else. But that book is fantastic. I didn't read Captain America number eight yet, but you did. No, oh, actually, I flipped through it, which is more than enough. <laughs> um, it's just—it's not as good as it used to be. I will definitely say that much. Um, Daredevil is far more entertaining. Suck my voltage. 
There you told go. Captain America. Well, wait, but while he's actually standing behind Captain America, oh, and yeah. Cap's got this face like, oh, don't stick it in there. Yeah, and he's on he's, in purple. He's saying, suck my voltage. I like purple, man. What's up with purple? The yeah, purple's the color for the... What? what? Really? What? Yeah, oh, there's a glad, gay, lesbian... I forget, but um. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong. No, I'm hey, do you? I'm just saying it's very. I like purple though, man. Who, who's seen? I'm know? not really like you know. I'm not up on pink too much, but. I wear pink, but I refuse to wear purple. It takes a tough man to wear pink. Hey. What's your beef with purple? I'm a big guy. I'm gonna look like fucking Barney. Fair enough. I don't need to hear these shit. I will fuck somebody up in the street. Nah. Barney goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's completely understandable. <laughs> All right. Also yellow. Big, School bus? Big Bird. Ah, Big Bird. You really, I think you just don't like Muppets. I think that's what it comes down to. I wanted green. I yeah. like Oscar. The Hulk. Oh, that's it. Ah. Venom Circle of Four Part Two. Now, this, this Venom story is going through issue 13. 13 points, like one through three or four. It's, it's not like it's one issue. Yeah. You, set, yeah. you understand? Uh -huh. yeah. And I'm not enjoying it at all. I don't I, blame you. I thought I was going to. It's like the new version of the Fantastic Four. The new, new Fantastic Four. Yeah. That's, I, I that don't was like cute. It. That was cute. I don't that like the whole woman ghost rider thing. She's an arrogant asshole who, like, Johnny Blaze is trying to teach. First of all, why is Johnny Blaze trying to teach this bitch? But he gave up being a ghost rider. I don't want nothing to do with the ghost rider. I don't want nothing to do with flaming skulls or anything. But hey, you got the ghost rider power. Now I feel obligated to show you how the ropes. He wants some fire boobies in his face. The fucking stupid shit. <laughs> It's bad. And I think it, I'm just about done with Venom. Yeah, he should be. Well, point. he's going to be in the Secret Avengers, I think. Is he? Because everybody's in the Secret Avengers AOS. Yeah. Scarlet Spider, issue two. I haven't read this one yet, but what's up? Um, it's... He does some superhero shit in Houston, and as much as he's reluctant, he decides to stay and be Houston's superhero. Houston doesn't have a superhero, and I think the cop and pretty much tells him, hey, look... You know, it was like, whatever, we need you. I looked the other way. I was using a gun, too. And the mayor of Houston is um, Mayor Parker. Really? Yeah. How convenient. Yeah, he said it's Parker, huh? So is it just fuck? It's fucking Spider-Man in Houston, Texas? Yes. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Like, he does he even retain any aspects of, like, the badassery of Kane? Yeah, he uses a gun in this for a minute. I saw that, but, like, he... I want a Punisher meets Spider-Man character, and I don't think I'm getting it out of this. I don't know how long I'm going to stick around with yeah, it. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that really happening either. Uh, Incredible Hulk 5, I'm still enjoying the story, but it's basically filler with Doctor Doom. Yeah. He's still fighting Bruce Banner. Um, still a fun story, mind you, but really nothing, nothing to report at this point. Uh, this Green Lantern 6, on to, moving on to DC. Uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying Green Lantern. I really like the fact that they did not... Just make Sinestro a Green Lantern for like a one or two issue stint. No, he, it's... I'm glad he's a Green Lantern. It's all leading up to this big shit with um, Guardians, though. Yeah, they got some new... Sh they got a, the third army running around. Because now in this book, Sinestro gets a hold of the Book of the Black, like a page of it, and, you know, gives him this whole vision and shit of the yeah. future. And, um, you know, it talks about uh, the third army and whatever and the death of the Green Lantern Corps. And then, he, you know, he comes out of it and he's like, wow, the Guardians wouldn't dare. I have to get Hal Jordan for this. So and Hal Jordan's busy, you know. Trying to be a human. Trying to be Batman over here fucking up guys in a hangar bay. Yeah, but he's like trying not to be Green Lantern. Sinestro comes in and just puts the little magic <laughs> ring back on his finger. He's like, come with me. I'm enjoying it. I really am. I don't know if I'm ready for another big-ass Green Lantern arc. I'm you not. know? Like, we just got over Blackest Night, then we got over War of the Green Lanterns, and now we're steamrolling headstrong toward another one. Uh, I think Jeff Johns needs to give us a break with this mm -hmm. shit for a little while. He should develop shit from those events. Like, we're still, starting to, we're still starting to learn from all these other corps. Right. So, just... And, you know, like, the, the, this is still, like, technically, this is the DCNU, but it's Green Lantern, so it's all the old shit, too. Yeah, a lot of the old shit still is prevalent in this shit. So, you know... Slow the fuck down. I, I, I know I guess maybe you're under pressure to get Hal back into the green suit, but this whole, you know, I know the Guardians are being fucked up little assholes at this point. It's fine. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm not ready for another big arc at this point. I just want to enjoy some self-contained stories for a while. 
Um, good issue of Batgirl. It I'm, is. I'm really enjoying this. Yeah. This is uh, one of my favorite Bat titles out right now. Um, not only because Gail Simone is writing it, and we all love her here, but um, I liked the crossover with Batman. I liked her justification from Bruce Wayne when he's like, you know, you whispered in the ear, you were yeah. always meant to be Batgirl. I almost cried. Oh. Yeah. And uh, it looks like, you know, the, the next issue is going to have the Joker in it, so that's definitely going to be one to jump on if you haven't been reading Batgirl. I hope it has a Joker and the Joker doesn't show up in the last fucking page to have the Joker type of Joker. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying, okay, actually. Good. Uh, that didn't I, make I, a lot of sense unless, like, yeah, I, unless but I know you. Geek. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you don't want them to do the whole lead up to the badass last page reveal thing. Yeah. I, you, I want this to be a nice revenge, because she's talking all about revenge and everything else, yeah. and now they're saying the Joker's coming, so this is going to be like her revenge, finally, but what, what, almost 20 years in the making of him shooting her in the hip. Not to say, like, you know, he paralyzed her, yeah, in the old DC universe, but she still never really got back no, at him. No, yeah, she, she never did. And also, um, Bat Joker hasn't been seen around since he had his face removed. So that's be nice true. If he shows up in this instead of Batman. That'd be nice. There's a lot of people running around in different bat in different superhero uh, the DC titles. You know, a lot of cameos being yeah. made back and forth. Uh, they made, one of the Batman books I read. Um, I think it was last week. Made mention of uh, I don't know. What, uh, not uh, I think maybe it was, oh uh, fucking I Vampire. Yeah. Batman showed up in I Vampire. The, the, apparently. the vampires went over to there. So um, the Gotham and. He had to get involved. Yeah. So that, that seems to be happening a lot lately. There was uh, Supergirl crossed over into Superboy this past time around uh, for issue oh, six. Oh, man. There's a crossover that was just announced with Superboy, Teen Titans, and Legion. Legion the Legion of Superheroes? Yes. Okay. And I'm, I'm ill. It's Well, Superboy and Teen Titans, the book goes very close together. Yes, I understand that. But Legion, no. Yeah. Uh, finally, this one, this one I was reading on my own. Penguin, Pain and Prejudice was, uh, this is a really cool series. Is it? I really enjoyed it. The artwork was phenomenal. Basically, the Penguin gets himself a girlfriend, and she doesn't know he's the Penguin. Really? Uh, she thinks he's just, like, you know, some stout dude. She's blind, right? So, and, like, you know, blind people, they, they be, like, touching your face, and they get a picture of you. She, he don't let her touch him. Up there, at least. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know? So, uh, but, and meanwhile, it's just, like, the Penguin doing fuck... <laughs> Basically, it's the, the, the first three issues are the most enjoyable because it's the Penguin just fucking over people who either laugh at him or something like that. Like, he just ends their lives but doesn't kill them. Like, oh, I'm sorry, you, the, your parent, the brakes on your parents' car went out while they were driving on a fucking mountain road. And uh, your girlfriend just found out you were cheating on her, even though you weren't, but you were. And uh, she killed herself. And, uh, you know, all, just all this fucked up shit that he does to people. Because yeah, he's, he's the penguin and he has the power to do that politically and you know criminally and everything. Hmm. Cool story. Yeah, Definitely, nice. if you're a Batman fan and you know you need a little break from trying to wrap your head around current continuity, good story. Get the trade. Uh, That's all you. Yeah, no. From Avatar, Ferals Two. I'm trying to get into this just to you know kind of broaden my horizons a little bit. Um, some werewolves, a lot of blood, a lot of tits for the sake of blood and tits. Um, I'm giving it a shot. Am I going to recommend it to you now? No, nope, not yet. So uh, see me after the first story arc. I'll let you know. Kevin Smith's The Bionic Man. This shit is awesome. Is it really? It's fucking awesome, man. I used to watch the show back in the day, and then it was, uh, you know, uh, Jamie Summers was Linda something. Something. I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But Actually, no, it's they're a doing fun... a Bionic Woman comic. I know they are. I know. It's a fun book, man. And there's like an evil, like prototype bionic man running around in this, of and course. he kicks his ass in this one. The the evil guy kicks uh, the new guy's the ass. New guy's ass. Yeah. It, this is a good story, and especially if you're a fan of the old show, this is definitely for you. Uh, Warriors of Mars number one came out, and there was also Warlord of Mars Annual. These came out last week. Uh. Um, I haven't read these yet because Warriors of Mars. Uh, it was tied into the Fall of Barzoom, which was a five-issue mini that I'm came out. I'm not into those two, and I dropped Digital Taurus. Did you? There's yeah. a lot of books. Running. There's Warlord of Mars. There's Warlord of Mars, Dejah Thoris. Now there's Warriors of Mars. Um, I'm actually trying to get back. I'm, I picked up the trade of Fall of Barzoom. It'll be here soon. And I got the issues that I missed previously. I had dropped Dejah Thoris, but our good buddy Captain Sweatpants said, uh, hey, big mistake. Get back on it. And I only missed three issues, so I was like, all right, fuck of it. Of what? 
of Dejah Thoris. Really? Yeah. Fuck. And I was like, you know what? I've wasted $10 on dumber shit. Yeah. So I'm going to get back into it. I'm really, I really did enjoy it. But the, the problem was I didn't want to be spread too thin over so many different titles. And because, you know, Edgar Rice Burroughs has three different <clears throat> novels of the whole John Carter series. So there's a lot that they're trying to just throw at you immediately. And especially with Disney's movie coming out later this year, they're going to completely inundate you with a bunch of shit. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to try to stay with it because I really am enjoying the stories. So uh, more on this later. I haven't read these yet, but I wanted to keep you guys posted that, you know, they're there. And finally, we have Dark Horse Comics. We're reading uh, Dark Matter Issue 2. Uh, it's like these... Event Horizon guys, they kind of wake up from stasis in a spaceship and they don't know anything about themselves. They don't know who they are, where they're going. They're lost in space. And finally, they, uh, um, after the ship's defenses, try to kill them and they have this little robot on board who, like an android type of thing, and they reprogram the android and he stops trying to kill them and he's trying to get back the ship's log of you know what the fuck they're doing out in space. And so they land on this planet, of uh, this inhabited planet, and they're trying to figure everything out. Um, it's a thoroughly entertaining story. I can't reveal too much at this point because there's a cool twist at the end of this Very book. Very cool, yeah. Um, I highly recommend <clears throat> it. You know, it's something different. It is. It's good. It really is. So you're only, you only missed one issue. Go to your local comic shop or go to eBay. Pick it up. Dark Matter from Dark Horse. You don't even have to. Really I picked cool. up that one and just read it and off of you. Yeah, you can actually was... just really gather it from there. The first one was mm -hmm. just kind of set up. Yeah. And uh, finally, I want to give a big shout out to my buddy Santo, who runs his own YouTube channel called Sans0915. Santo does uh, like tech reviews, any kind of new stuff for the computer. He goes over cool. new devices, programs, stuff like that. Check him out on YouTube. Tell him Pete's Basement sent you. And, you know, this is like perfect for graphic artists and stuff like that, who, you know, they're always creating new stuff for. And Santo's going to do it, use it and review it for you. So before you're going to go waste your money on you know, all kinds of new That's stuff. Cool. My old ass needs help with tech too. Uh, it's a very fun show. Very cool. Very educational. So check them out. That's Sans, S-A-N-Z, 0915. Tell them Pete's Basement sent you. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. And thanks for the shout out, buddy. So I think that about does it for us. All right. Mm. You can read the Playboy again, but you stay here. You stay here. We'll see you guys next week. I suggest you leave then. <laughs> Good God! <laughs> Eggs contain a large amount of cysteine, which breaks down hangover toxins. Bananas provide electrolytes and potassium, and amino acids in meat will help. Dude, I have a joke for us. <laughs> Bitch, make me some breakfast, but I have a hangover. Exactly. Little logos on it, both with white and navy logos, and you're like, oh look, you like a little mini me, or better yet, a guinea me. <laughs> Wait, I could call you a guinea. Yeah. They stay at home in the spank bank. I talked to Ramon uh, excitedly about something. Hey, caramba! Holy mackerel! I can't wait for the Avengers movie! Why don't you like it? I think it looks good! Barf. Oh, yeah! Timing good, guys. There we go. <laughs> we actually did it at the same time before. It was like yeah. Wonder Twin Powers activated. It was pretty cool. Titties! Probably not.